Hi, I'm Jeffrey, and welcome back to Night Falls. Come, settle in for tonight's calming meditation and soothing bedtime story. As always, don't worry if you fall asleep before the end. You can drift off whenever you're ready. Perhaps you'd like to come and dry out beside the fire. For today in Nightfalls, something unusual is happening. It's raining. I find that there is something rather relaxing about muggy, rainy days. Nightfalls feels endlessly sleepy when the birds are nesting in the tree canopy to try and keep their feathers dry and the animals are tucked up in their respective burrows and nests. As the rain falls around us even the flower petals are beginning to close up and protect themselves from the elements. As the flowers shut out the dreary dampness of the day why don't we too take a moment to shut out the noise and chaos of the outside world. Come to a comfortable position and grant yourself a moment alone to breathe, to be. Draw in a deep breath, hold it for a moment and exhale, releasing any thoughts crowding at the corners of your mind on the current of your out-breath. Drawing in another deep breath, hear the light patter of the rainfall at your ear and allow that sound to sink beneath your skin and into the very core of your being. As you exhale, feel that rain cleansing your thoughts and washing away any negativity that has bound itself up in your body or mind. The rainfall is restorative and rejuvenating. It brings with it the promise of a fresh start. The clatter and chaos of all that came before is washed away by each and every drop and drains off of these hillsides. Now, if you're feeling ready, Our journey into nightfalls with fresh eyes can begin. It was particularly humid this afternoon in nightfalls. The air had felt heavy in my lungs and left my skin warm and sticky. I went for a hike amongst the ferns and the scent of the pines was particularly strong, as if drawn out by the moist air. I'd followed the ridgeline, stepping over twisting roots and ducking under creaking boughs. I stopped now and again at the flicker of movement, once a rabbit, twice a teeny tiny field mouse, and once the rustle of a deer, which evaded my sight. Climbing up through the hilly forest, I reached a vantage point and looked out over unruly forest, mapping clearings and crags, noting the lush lines of foliage which indicated streams and rivers. Looking out, I saw some sort of bird of prey, wings outstretched, swooping in large arcs through the air, seeming to not move a muscle. It was covering miles effortlessly, with its beady eyes focused on the underbrush. I'd hiked far, carried away by the excitement of the climb. Just as I returned to the clearing, with my calves aching pleasantly 
from the long, quiet expedition. I felt one large, cool drop of rain fall onto my warm forehead. Now, here I find myself in my shelter, listening to the gentle drumming of the rain on the roof. I'm pleasantly surprised that my makeshift shelter is keeping me warm, dry and comfortable. The rain is sinking into the pillowy moss on the forest floor and I smell the scent of nature in the air. From my cosy haven I can see clearly from the window as raindrops hit the lake at the foot of the falls, sending droplets dancing across its usually mirror-like surface. The clouds seem to be accumulating and darkening, taking on a deep purple colour, similar to that of the heather that grows in the tufts through the woodlands. I hear a steady, rolling grumble of thunder in the distance. I gain great comfort from such moody elements, knowing that I am safe and warm to watch the spectacle, to experience the release of heavy clouds, to hear echoing booms of thunder, to witness the majesty of nature whilst at utter peace myself. It reminds me of being a child, huddled at the window, nose pressed against the glass, watching the streams of water, waiting for the exhilaration of lightning. I remember how I'd coo at the flashes, awestruck by their power, but feeling safe and protected by the warmth of my blankets. The pine trees have taken on a shiny, emerald colour, and whilst watching the slow drip, drip, drip of the rain from the tips of their branches, I notice movement on the forest floor. A red squirrel takes his own shelter in the tree line, poised calmly upon a large root as if watching the rain himself. The squirrel twitches his nose and brushes the droplets from the tufts of hair on his ears. He stays stock still for a while, gazing out across the clearing. Stock still, aside from his occasional sniff of the damp air. After his rest, I watch as the squirrel begins foraging in the undergrowth, moving swiftly and silently over the carpet with sweetly scented pine needles, tiptoeing down the path of obtrusive gnarled roots and darting around any drips of rain that permeated the thick canopy of branches overhead. I watch the squirrel as he grasps and discards old husks of pine cone. He sniffs tentatively at a small golden toadstool before dismissing it and moving on, further into the tree line on his search for sustenance. I can't help but think that, despite the comfort of my shelter here, the rain is beginning to look inviting. The rain is heavy now, sheets of sparkling droplets forming small puddles and streams towards the lake. I look down across the lake, pleased to have built my shelter on a path of higher ground, gazing from my vantage point towards the waterfall, usually calm and today majestic, churning the water into pure white foam as smaller waterfalls develop on the cliff face around and streams rush away hurriedly carrying crystal cool water out of the clearing.
head to the boundary of my shelter and place my hand outstretched, palm to the sky. I smile at the sensation of cool raindrops against my warm skin and step out into the clearing. The rain is heavy, but it feels so light and refreshing, leaving me tingling and feeling somehow ever freer. Even though nothing tastes cleaner and more refreshing than the water brought to me by the crystal waterfall, I arrange my pots and pans in the clearing to catch this special rain. I feel like I'm embracing nature. And I feel it welcomes me too, as it calls me from the glistening pool by the waterfall. Although the waterfall continues to tumble and turn, the pool ebbs and flows as gently as ever. I wade into the pool and feel my muscles relax as I lean back to float on its surface. I stay here for a while, enjoying the sounds of the falls and the sensation of cool water, feeling all of my other thoughts drift away. I swim a couple of laps of lazy breaststroke, stretching my arms and legs. I reach out as far as I can and glide across the water contentedly. I fill my lungs with sweet, warm air and plunge my head under the surface of the clear pool. Down here, it feels like it is not raining at all. Everything remains as serene as ever. A few beams of golden evening sunlight break through the clouds and illuminate the water in front of me sending shimmering patterns across the smooth white pebbles underfoot. Rising back up above the water and enjoying some deep restorative breaths as I float, I watch these beams of light upon the waterfall. They turn the droplets to silver, dancing through the air. Through this spray of glitter, I see a soft rainbow beginning to form. I climb onto a smooth, lilac grey rock and up further, up the rocky ledge by the waterfall. The rocks are rough and grippy underfoot. I laugh as the rain hits my body. From this height, I see the full height of the falls and wonder what lies above. I have the impression that the falls come from the sky and that there couldn't possibly be anything higher. I raise my arms above my head, bend my knees and dive into the lake. I've never been much good at diving and my legs flop over far from graceful. Emerging from the lake, I clamber up once, twice, three times more, plunging into the lake until my form improves and I cut through the water elegantly. My muscles feel tired now and my eyes heavy. The clouds have begun to thicken once more and are taking on a lilac tinge. I can feel the crackle of electricity in the air and hear a faraway grumble. I retreat once more to the haven of my shelter and dry myself with my fire-warmed fluffy towel. I dry my wet clothes on a makeshift line of rope, tied taut between two smooth sticks plunged into the earth, and allow the flames to warm me too. 
I put some of my clean, comfortable brushed cotton pajamas, climb into my sleeping bag, hunkering down on my camp bed, exhausted. I feel the absolute peace of this moment, the peace of being welcome in the wilderness, all alone, safe and warm, with nothing to do but listen and watch. I while away some time resting my tired muscles, a little while later I feel rested enough to set about building the fire, sheltered from the rain by a makeshift canopy I had thankfully installed prior to the weather's turn. Having neglected the fire, comforted instead by the warmth of my sleeping bag, the flames were now dwindling. I added wood and kindling, blowing on the small flames and watching the embers dance into the air where they floated slowly in the still air before being extinguished by the rain. As I build up the campfire, the rain begins to pelt down around me, drumming rhythmically on the roof. Around me, the ferns glistened deep emerald, their outermost leaves bending with the weight of the water, the sand around the lake darkened to a deep, shiny gold. The day before, on my explorations, I came across another clearing, far away from my own. This one was small and green, peaceful and simple. Long grass dotted with small white flowers grew in this sunny spot, and the surrounding pines were smaller and sparser than those I was accustomed to. I could see the burrows of animals at their roots, small dark holes leading down below the earth, carpeted with warm, dark soil. In the centre of the clearing stood a vast chestnut tree with light, full leaves and spiny burrs bursting with shiny chestnuts. It was early for chestnuts to be ripe and unusual to see them growing here at all. But I counted myself lucky and collected as many chestnuts as I could fit in my pockets. I now can't help but feel the forest somehow anticipated the stark change in weather and offered me these fruits in consolation. I scored the hard chestnut skin with my pocket knife and placed them in a cast iron pan which I rest over the glowing embers of my fire. I heat a kettle of water brew hot tea, sweetened with brown sugar. Warmed by the tea and the crackling fire, I sit on a dry patch of pillowy heather and enjoy my roasted chestnuts, thinking fondly of the memories the food inspired, of the warm and cosy winters of my childhood. I am peacefully tired. I feel safe and cosy here against the beauty of the storm. The sky darkens outside and I strum softly on my guitar, humming absent-mindedly to some half-forgotten tune, plucking out pleasant melodies, transforming it into something quite new. The rain provides a steady percussion that becomes part of my song. 
I look out across the grumbly dusk, and despite the storm, the moonlight still finds a way to illuminate the lake. I see a faint blue glow far beyond the amber light of the fire, and watch the lazy dance as the silver moon and the golden flames cast their light upon the water. I'm in constant awe of this place, in all of its state. I'm in awe of the falls first thing in the morning, when the birdsong wakes me from my sleep, when I see blue sky from my resting place, and feel inspired to move, to rise, stretch, and begin another day. On these mornings, the waterfall moves at a steady trickle. And the water below it is glassy and still. I like to plunge my feet in the water and marvel at its transparency. Once, on such a blue sky morning, I was sat with my feet in the water, drinking my tea and soaking in the serenity of the moment. When I sensed movement in the trees to my left, squinting against the morning sun, I saw nothing but the gentle sway of the trees. Suddenly, something flashed across my peripheral vision, a flash of royal, shining blue. And I saw him then, poised on a low bow, positioned near the water, a glistening kingfisher, with his piercing eyes fixed on the lake, surprisingly large and unexpectedly regal. He sat there for a while, before taking to the air and disappearing once more, for good this time, having found the pristine lake empty of fish. Not every day has a blue sky here, but it's no less remarkable when the sky is moody, filled with fluffy clouds, highlighted with moody blues and purples. On these days, I feel my gaze move to the majesty of the forest, the thick canopy of foliage in all shades of green, large, waxy, dark leaves can be found next to the light furred leaves of sage, knotted, twisting vines hang from some trees, like some remnant of the Jurassic period, or of some other world, in which plants have minds of their own. You see them hugging trees, coiled in gentle symbiosis, or wrapped around one another in a snake-like struggle. Delicate flowers of white and lilac speckle the forest floor. At sunrise and sunset, my gaze turns to the sky. First thing in the morning, the sky turns a soft yellow, streaked with gentle tufts of cloud, which seem to set alight the rise of the sun. When the sky turns apricot, and the cloud's edges glowing gold. At sunset, the sky is smudged with pink and purples, as the golden sun dips below the tree line and I begin to rely on the flickering fire for light. Tonight, the fire is my light and my warmth, an enchanting view and a comforting base, keeping the storm at bay. I hear distant rumbles and see flashes of lightning, far away enough to further accentuate my comfort here 
by the fire. I begin to imagine these far-off flashes as little stars falling to earth and landing in the forest, cushioned by moss. I dream of heading out on my next adventure to recuperate them and hang them back up amongst the constellations where they belong. Cozy in this magical moment, confined to my shelter by the rain, undisturbed and wanting to be nowhere else, I feel at peace. Rain is rejuvenating, and this rain tonight has given me the rest I needed. I find myself a little peckish, and I gather my cast iron pan and collect the food I foraged on my hike. I was lucky today. I cooked handfuls of chanterelle mushrooms over the fire with wild onions and garlic. I made a salad of dandelion leaves, toasted nuts and brambles, then wrapped the brown paper of a crusty loaf I had made and drizzled it with oil I was infusing in glass bottles with herbs I picked from the clearing. I ate slowly and mindfully, savouring every bite the ambiance is lovely here by the fire, and the flames are so enchanting, I want to surround myself with their light. I take a mason jar and tip out the trinkets within. i had been collecting things I found in the woods here, an acorn, an old coin, a remarkably smooth and round pebble. I leave these on my side table and take the jar outside. Some pine resin that I collected a week or so ago. I was attracted to its honeycomb colour and rich scent and was sure it would come in handy. I scoop some sand into the base of the jar and fashion a candle using the rich gold resin and a scrap of twine. I use more twine, twisting it and knotting it, to form a twisting mesh, which, once lit, I use to hang the candle from my shelter. Pleased with myself, I sit back and watch the small flame dance, breathing in the fragrant smell of pine. Content, full, and feeling as tired as the now dipping fire, I retreat to my shelter. I look around. I look at the wooden table I had lovingly crafted and felt proud, despite its lack of varnish and wonky legs. I take in the charms I had created, from twine, pebbles, and whittled wood, and listen carefully for the pleasant, gentle knocking sounds they make as I brush past. I look across the trinkets that line the shelves there, crafts I had made, the mementos I had picked up on my journey. I open the thick book that lays on the table to peek at the delicate wildflowers I have been pressing within its aged pages. And finally, I look at my bed, a comforting nest of thick blankets and fluffy pillows. I am thankful and so fond of this home I had created for myself in the wilderness. Feeling content, I pull on my wool socks and climb into bed. The mattress feels softer than ever. 
it melds to my body, and I immediately feel the beckon of sleep. I feel supported, protected, and lulled by the storm. I take slow breaths and let any last thoughts flit from my mind. I close my eyes, sink even deeper into my mattress, and focus on the rhythm of the rain. I sigh of contentment and soon drift off to sleep.